Ask the Messengers, the program that deals with substance abuse, real people telling real stories. Hosted by Pastor Lester Lewis, co-host Charlize Wilkerson and Leroy Carey. Produced by David Humphreys. Where there is addiction, there is a chance for recovery. We're trying to help save lives on Ask the Messengers. September is Recovery Month, and today on Ask the Messengers, we travel to the Oakland Community Health Network's Walk and Rally to celebrate recovery. Also, we're going to travel to Live Right's third annual Battle of the Bands, where they raise funds for their community resource building. We open today's show with a real person sharing a poem about her real life. Now you said to us you have a poem that you that you wrote. Can you please recite it and, and, and share it with our, our audience? Yes. Okay. okay. I'm five years old and I am a doctor, a soldier, a mother, a princess. I wonder if I'll see the world a different way when I'm old enough to play without my babysitter. But for now, I'm whoever I choose to be. No fear of facing adversity, no pressure of mounting up to something or someone, I'm only who I dream. I'm 16 and wishing I was anywhere besides this math class trying to pass, but my brain wasn't wired in equations or logarithms. Rhythms dance through my mind, I'm losing focus. But something deep inside me is screaming, you are more than what they want you to be, but to be successful, I must be the smartest, beat the standards, forget my heart and my passions, just study to pass and I am no more than a score, and it makes me wonder if I'll ever amount up to something or someone more. I'm only what they think. Now I'm 23, still young, but done with the chapter of high school, but I'll still ask myself what I'll do or who I'll be, but first I need to know who I am. I'm an addict, but recovery's instilled inside me. You see, I can't start this journey if I'm still in the past, and I can't start the next chapter if I'm still reading the last, so who am I? A doctor, a soldier, a mother, a writer, a symbol of weakness, of sex and desire. Tell me who decided my right and my limits on life just because I've got an X instead of a Y. Is this the way the world works? Am I bound to a system where I'm forced to listen to words like, maybe if you show more skin and less of what you really think, then I can live comfortably. Comfortably contradicting everything that I am. Well, they are wrong. I don't have to be that or lose my identity that's been placed on me. I'm not my past, my shape, or my mistakes. I'm simply just a woman in recovery. I'm simply just me. I'm ambitious, a light in this world. I'm a voice. I'm a girl who's not perfect, but striving, struggling, trying to make a difference. Because I realized I'm so much more than I thought, and I'm so much more than who they'll ever choose to see. I'm distinguished and defined by who I choose to be. We are celebrating recovery with those who have come to the place of realizing that recovery is possible. Listen to these stories of real recovery and individuals who know that life gets better. So what was your drug of choice? Methamphetamines. How were you introduced? When I was 17, uh, I got introduced by my friend Jeff, who lived with me and just got out of prison. And before I learned how to smoke it, I, I was cooking it. Okay. So now, what, 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 what things did you go through while you were, were addicted to, the, to methamphetamines? I mean, it kind of made me feel like Superman. Like, I could do whatever. I was more focused. I was able to stay up longer and play games longer. And, I mean, it felt great. So, so how did you realize you needed to, to get off and to start your road to recovery? Seems like every time that I started using, I started losing. Mm -hmm. So, uh... I mean, I, I lost my trailer uh, just a couple months ago. I lost my job and I got evicted and became homeless again. And it just seems like it's very toxic drug. So now how did you realize you needed to get to the place of recovery? And, and, and why are you now taking those steps? I felt lost. I felt like... I didn't even want to be anymore. And uh, last year I lost my girlfriend and I just, I mean, gave up. I, I felt numb even when I wasn't using, so I wanted to feel 
numb because I, I felt numb. Okay. All right. Well, listen, we want to wish you the very best in your recovery and continue to keep walking and with the Lord. All right. Definitely. What was your drug of choice? Crack, alcohol, and marijuana. Okay, so you had multiple things that you were addicted to. Yes. Now, how were you initially introduced? Uh, I was introduced to med I mean, marijuana at the age of 12 through friends. Uh, crack cocaine I was introduced to through my sister. Uh, and alcohol ran through my family, so it was sort of a, a history with my family. Okay. So now, what happened as you were in your addiction that made you realize, I need to get to the place of recovery? Well, I realized when I hit uh, rock bottom, when things began to become unmanageable, uh, I went to prison for 16 years. Uh, I heard everything and everybody that was around me, you know. Uh, drugs brought me to my weakest point, you know. Uh, I had thoughts of suicide. Uh, I was a mess, you know, and I decided to do something to change my life. Okay. Now, how important is it that you stay the course? It's very important. I realize, you know, this is only a beginning. I have to do this the rest of my life, you know. So it's a lot of things that I have to learn to process because I've been running for so long. You know, drugs was my comfort zone. I didn't have to feel, you know, I didn't really have to do anything but think about how to get my next drug. So today I'm trying to live life on life terms and learn how to live life without drugs. I'm here with Stacy Burns and Scott Macy, and they're going to tell us about some of the things that they are advocating for. Stacy, can you tell us exactly why uh, a, an event like this is so important? Um, an event like this is important because we're in an, air, um, an area of an opioid epidemic and a crack epidemic. And, you know, on the news and in the public eye, you see the heroin overdoses and the family suffering. We need to show people what recovery looks like. Um, that's where I came in about seven years ago. I started with a woman named Jeannie Richards. She was the president and founder of Brian's Hope, and uh, she was the mother of a heroin epidemic who lost her son Brian so what I did is I trained I transitioned into starting what we call a recovery community community organization drug-free all-stars um, we support multiple pathways um, whether you're using or you're going to use for your first time or you're on Suboxone or Methadone or Vivitrol or you're eating tree bark to stay clean, we support where you're at, not where we want you to be. Um, and then I also sit on the board with Scott Macy, which he'll talk about, United to Face Addiction Michigan. Nova, I sit on just wherever I can be of service. Um, I'm mainly out of Oakland County, but I go wherever I'm invited. So my my pathway was Methadone. And when I started advocating about five, year ago, five years ago, there was a huge stigma on it. And um, I decided I needed to do something because I had already suffered the stigma for someone else. So I utilized my story and I utilized my experience. And, um, you know, we come from a loving place to just pick people up where they're at. Now, Stacey, before we go, I want you to tell us how can someone get in touch with you if they want information? Um, well, Drug Free All Stars has a website. Um, it's Drug Free it's drugfreeallstars.org because we are a 501c3. Um, we have a hotline, which is 248-742-1848. Um, I also have a Facebook page and a Facebook group. Um, and on top of that, during the day, I work for Turning Point Recovery Center. We're a state-funded facility. Um, men and women and three-quarter houses that do support medical assisted treatment. That is 248-334. 7760, but you can also go through the OCHN funder, which is 248 464 6363. Thank you so much. Uh, All right. Tell us uh, how important is it for you to share your story to help others? Well, I mean, it's, it's very important just to be here, be amongst uh, the people in recovery, people looking for recovery, and putting a face and a voice to this issue. Um, that's the most important thing, I mean, by far. Um, you know, because a lot of things happen without us, but it, it can't be about us without us. So. Now, now, you serve on multiple boards and you, you help in, in multiple ways. Why is it so important that you give back? Well, I mean, it's very important because that's just part of, uh, by giving back, you're getting back, you know? Right. Um, and that's, you know, I mean, it just feels so good. And it continues uh, to build, you know, uh, from an addict standpoint and someone that finds recovery, it builds our self-esteem. It builds um, our place um, in understanding, you know, this disease and being able to relate to so many different people and, under, you know, letting them understand, they're, you know, you're loved. I mean, there's a lot of love out here, a lot of support. And um, if we can continue to put a face and a voice to this issue and attract people, I mean, that's what it's all about. What was the worst thing that you experienced and how did it lead you to now the best thing in your life? Well, I think, you know, the, the worst thing was when I finally realized that I wasn't just, I mean, it, we, the disease of addiction is so, um, it, it, it really plays on you. It, um, 
it tells you, um, you know, it's manipulative. It's very manipulative. And when I finally got through that and understood that, it was, you know, I was telling myself I'm only affecting myself. I mean, my drug use is only taking a toll on me. Right. Um, I was married at the time, two kids in diapers. And um, when I finally realized it was affecting them just as bad as me. Right. And um, that really hurt. And, you know, you know, I'm never going to get that time back with my children. Right. Unfortunately, the relationship with my wife, uh, we had to, you know, divorce. Um, and, you know, those are those are things that happen because of my addiction, but that also that I have to face going forward and learn from. And I think uh, when you find the opportunity for gratitude um, and, uh, and, and that, that it really helps. It really helps you. Um, and you can be... I mean, you can help so many other people because, you know, I'm no different than a lot of other people going through the same thing. Right, right. It's just, you know, it, there's no demographic that this uh, that addiction doesn't uh, doesn't um, take hold of. Right. And at the same time, recovery will, can can take hold of all of them as well. All right. Well, listen, thank you for sharing your message oh, with well, us here on Ask the, the Messengers. Yeah, all right. Well, thank all right, you. Scott. Thank you. Yeah. We'll be right back with more of Ask the Messengers. Come inside the Hall Stars Business Center for all your business printing. We offer mailbox rental, computer and internet rental, notary services, send and receive faxes, and more. Come inside Hall Stars for all your mailing and shipping, domestic and international. We offer same day printing and postcard flyers starting at $5. Check out our website at hallstars.com, Hall Stars with a Z, or call us at 313-342-4145. Welcome, Judge Mathis. Thanks for coming to share an important message with the Wayne County taxpayers. Well, thank you for allowing me to help. You know, most of my life I was a resident of Wayne County, and so I'm here to help because Treasurer Sabri wants to work with Wayne County homeowners to keep families in their homes and prevent foreclosure. If you're having trouble making your property tax payments, let us know. We have many resources to help. Take the first step towards staying in your home by going down to the Wayne County Treasurer's Office on the fifth floor of the International Building in Greektown. Stop by today to learn more about our payment plan and especially the newly extended interest rate reduction program. Already in the payment plan, it's important you stay in good standing. Making property tax payments is now easier than ever. We have placed payment kiosks in Rite Aid stores and community centers across the county. We've also added kiosks in our offices. Contact us at 313-224-5990 or email us at taxinfo at waynecounty.com. Changing an addict's life and providing support to the addict's family is the goal of the Live Right Structure Recovery Corp. Free yoga and spiritual recovery classes on Thursday, automotive maintenance class, and physical nutritional classes on Friday. Visit their new residential recovery resource center located at 27700 Gratiot Avenue in Roseville, Michigan. Live Right also accepts donations of cars, trucks, boats, and campers in any condition. For more information and a complete list of their events, go to their website at LiveRightStructuredCorp.com or call 586-217-5899. Life short. Live right. And we're back. Ask the Messengers is on location at the third annual Battle of the Bands, sponsored by Live Right Structured Recovery Corp. We're here in Fraser, Michigan, and we are having a great time. Many people are here to share their stories, to share their message with Ask the Messengers. Take a listen at some of these inspiring stories. What was your drug of choice? Um, my drug of choice mostly was pills, ecstasy, Adderall, Xanax. Whatever got me high, you know, basically. So, so now, how were you introduced to those, and who introduced you? Um, you know what? I grew up in the system. I was introduced to drugs at a young age, just by other people in my surroundings. Always just seemed normal to me. I never really saw it as a bad thing at first. So, so how did that impact your, your, your teenage years, growing up, and, and your young adult years? I mean, growing up, the only thing I did was just run around and get high. By the time I was 21, I would hit the penitentiary, spent half my life there, you know what I mean? And in a way, God reached out to there, to me there and just let me know, you know what I'm saying? He was saving my life, you know? So, so through that rock bottom experience, he helped you to find your way to recovery? Yeah, took me all the way to the bottom, yep. So now how long have you been in recovery and what keeps you clean? I've been clean probably a little over a year. What keeps me clean is basically, you know what I mean, seeing other people in addiction and knowing I never want to be there, you know what I mean? And then I got a personal relationship with God, you know, I talk to him every single day. 
and he just lets me know, you know, that it ain't for me, you know what I mean? And it just, just gives me the strength every day. All right. Can you tell us what your drug of choice was? Heroin. Now, how were you introduced to heroin? Um, surgeries, opiates, a long history of opiate addiction, and it, the pills weren't working anymore, so I moved to the street drug and went from there. So are you saying a medical issue led to you beginning to use heroin? Yes, daily taking um, prescription pills from a surgery over and over and over until I was out of my prescription in half the month and I go buy them or steal to buy them or, you know, whatever it took to get my drug of choice. So now, when did you hit your rock bottom? Um, a year ago, um, I got caught stealing, got arrested for the first time. Um, when I got pulled over, I had needles, everything in the car. Um, lost my children due to it. So, I mean, it's been, it's been a hard struggle, but 95 days clean off heroin, so. So now, what keeps you clean? What keeps you wanting to stay away from that, that stuff now? The humility it took to getting to where I am in recovery, because this is my fourth recovery center this year, and Salvation has given Salvation Army's gave me the opportunity to be, to have a chance to come back a third time. Where you know, the humility of walking back in those doors after being kicked out, it it was just it, that was one of the hardest things I had to do. But now that I'm clean and I have God every day in my life, He gives me the strength every day to to wake up and recover and walk down the hallways because I'm, you know, I can't go outside or anything right now. So being there and with my Bible and everything, that's what keeps me going. So now, why is it so important that you let everyone know, never stop trying to quit? Um, I actually died on heroin. I was pronounced dead for 45 minutes. The doctor said I was lucky that I wasn't made into a vegetable. Um, so every day I just stay away from it because fentanyl kills and so does heroin. Just Stay away from it if you can. Keep it out of your life because it's one of the hardest things to get off of. Well, Ask the Messengers would like to thank you for sharing your message with us. We're here at the third annual Live Right Structure Recovery Corp Battle of the Bands. And I have with me one of the showcase bands who is here today battling uh, for the crown. Uh, this group is called Cyadine. Now, can you tell us how you got that name? Well, uh, you know, I was just kind of sitting down. Me and Benny were at the dinner table trying to figure out, you know, band names and... You know, we saw cyanide, kind of like, you know, anthrax and all those other bands with poison names. And, you know, I couldn't say it right. And we looked up, you know, it was, you know, there's a band named Cyanide. So we're just kind of sitting there. We're like, you know, I couldn't say it right. Saying cyanide. I'm like, that sounds pretty cool. Let's do cyanide. And then we all kind of agreed on it. And that's been the band name ever since. All right. Tell us your name first. Uh, Eddie Knappenberger. Okay. Your name? Shane Newell. Benny Knappenberger. Noah Polston. Okay. Now. How important is it that you guys at, at events like this, of course it's exposure, but how important is it to be at an event where you're helping people who are, you know, celebrating their recovery? You know, uh, I've, you know, in school there's a lot of addiction and like all this other stuff and like going around in different places and like, you know, school's one of the big part because you got all the vaping and nicotine addictions and, you know, you got young people drinking at the same age, you know, we don't say that's right and we definitely don't condone it and it's not good but we're always open we're always helping you know bandmates local bands trying to get out of that so we get on track you know stay with the music getting good and uh that's that's what we've been doing like you know if someone's having a problem they come to us and you know we help them like that's always been us like you know that's so now so now do you know anyone that has struggled with uh substance abuse issues uh nobody in particular just a lot of people at the school just with all that vaping addiction yeah so now, how do you how do you stay away from it? What, what what keeps you away from it all? I just don't partake. If I get offered, I don't say yes. I just kind of go away from it, you know. Okay. Now, how about you? Do you know anyone that is struggling with substance abuse issues? There has been a lot in mine and Eddie's family, and um, typically we encourage them. We'll take them to like other counseling or stuff, and it's we try to deal with it with our family first. And um, it's been going good. You know, one of our cousins from Texas, he he's had a bunch of problems, but he's getting through it, and it's going good now. So. It's a lot of just helping each other and making sure each other's doing good. So now, how rewarding is it to be at an event like this and to know that you're helping people? Um, I think it's rewarding in the sense that hopefully we see progress. I know last year we've we've talked to people who said they were there and it said to help them with some things, like friends of family and whatnot. And um, I think it'll be even more rewarding the more progress we see from just being here and supporting everybody. So, so listen, if anyone wants to book you guys and have you on, how can they get in touch with you? Instagram, Facebook, we got, you know, all they have to do is message us, Messenger, Instagram, Twitter even. The message us, we answer is like probably in a couple minutes, you know, we're always on our phones. 
Oh, so, right. like... <laughs> When you look up cyadine, it's going to autocorrect to cyanide, so make sure you type, there's going to be a thing that says, did you mean cyadine instead? Make sure you click that so we come up. Once you type that in, we're going to be all over because there's no one else with cyadine. So. All right. Listen, thank you guys so very much. We appreciate you. And again, we here at Ask the Messengers appreciate what you guys are doing to help others in recovery. All right? Don't go anywhere. Ask the Messengers. We'll be right back. Welcome, Judge Mathis. Thanks for coming to share an important message with the Wayne County taxpayers. Well, thank you for allowing me to help. You know, most of my life I was a resident of Wayne County, and so I'm here to help because Treasurer Sabri wants to work with Wayne County homeowners to keep families in their homes and prevent foreclosure. If you're having trouble making your property tax payments, let us know. We have many resources to help. Take the first step towards staying in your home by going down to the Wayne County Treasurer's office on the fifth floor of the International Building in Greektown. Stop by today to learn more about our payment plans and especially the newly extended interest rate reduction program. Already in the payment plan, it's important you stay in good standing. Making property tax payments is now easier than ever. We have placed payment kiosks in Rite Aid stores and community centers across the county. We've also added kiosks in our offices. Contact us at 313-224-5990 or email us at taxinfo at waynecounty.com. I'm Artesia Washington, and I'd like to welcome you to Irvine Head Injury, where restoring you to your previous level of functioning is our goal. We offer services such as physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech and language pathology, aquatic therapy, massage therapy, and counseling. An automobile accident is an unfortunate event. If you feel that you or a loved one can benefit from our services, you can be reached at 248-415-2500. We look forward to hearing from you. Changing an addict's life and providing support to the addict's family is the goal of the Live Right Structure Recovery Corps. Free yoga and spiritual recovery classes on Thursday, automotive maintenance class, and physical nutritional classes on Friday. Visit their new residential recovery resource center located at 27700 Gratiot Avenue in Roseville, Michigan. Live Right also accepts donations of cars, trucks, boats, and campers in any condition. For more information and a complete list of their events, go to their website at LiveRightStructuredCorp.com or call 586-217-5899. Life short. Live right. We're back. I am here with Brenda Max. She is uh, the organizer of today. Why it, it is growing every year. Can you tell us what this event is all about? All about? This is for uh, raising funds for our resource center. It's a recovery resource center here in um, Frazier. I'm sorry, we're in Roseville. We do have houses here in Frazier. And what we're trying to do is make resources for individuals in recovery and their families to help out showing, reducing the stigma, changing lives of individuals, and um, getting some recovery going. What was the passion behind you developing the Battle of the Bands? Well, the passion behind it is uh, helping recovering addicts and their families. So my vision was to open a resource center to where I could change lives and help individuals make that change from addiction to recovery and sustain recovery. So my vision is, uh, you know, a little crazy. I want it all and I want to do it all for them. Um, so the Battle of the Bands is a fundraiser to help put money into the new resource center, which is in uh, Roseville on Gratiot and 11 Mile. And we have 14,000 square feet of education, food, clothing, art class, music class. We have uh, spiritual recovery, refuge recovery. We have AA, NA, they rent space, LGBT recovery. We have a library, we have a gym, we have a clothing store, and I believe I, I mentioned the food pantry as well. And we have RCTs that help individuals. We have therapy in the building that is not our therapist, but they are in there, and they will help individuals. And that's my passion, is, is building this resource center to help and the families. We have Naranon and we have family coaching. We have a lot of events going on. So you've got so much happening. Can you tell, because look, they already watched the show, so they already know you're a, you're a sponsor. <laughs> right. But if someone wants to get in touch in any of those resources, how do they get in touch with you? They can call Live Right Structure Recovery Resource Center, 586-217-5899, and leave a message or 
Get the next number. We always 24-7 are answering the phones. All right. Well, Brenda, we're having a wonderful time. And again, Ask the Messages is here, and we're glad to be a partner with Live Right Structure Recovery Corp. Thanks, Brenda. Thank you so much. Right. I am Lester Lewis, your host. We want you to know that here at Ask the Messengers, we believe in messages. We believe that everyone has a message to tell. Won't you help us to do exactly what our motto is, and that is to help save lives? Won't you send a generous donation to the information there on the screen? We would love to have you as part of our partnership to help save lives. Uh, you may not be able to go out in the street, you may not be able to go come here to the show, but you can send your donation that helps us save lives. Our prayers and our sympathy go out to those who have lost loved ones as a result of their battle with addictions. Though they may not be with us physically, their light will forever shine within the spirits and within those family members who have been left behind. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. The National Prescription Drug Take Back addresses a crucial public safety and public health issue. According to the 2016 National Survey on Drug Use and Health, 6.2 million Americans misuse controlled prescription drugs. The study shows that a majority of abused prescription drugs were obtained from family and friends, often from the home medicine cabinet. The DEA's Take Back provides year-round drug disposal opportunities for Americans to prevent drug addiction and overdose deaths. Take a moment to find an authorized collector in your area today. Stand clean must come first. Recovery is not rehearsed. Recovery is what happens in our meetings and we take it everywhere we go. We grow. We work the steps and don't use. We are no longer that confused. Strange, our reactions change. We're no longer taking, we're ever to give. This is the best life we'll ever live.